Hey, it is Dr. Chen. So lucky to have a special guest with us talking about two aspects of medicine that I love to talk about, which is music and purpose. My man right over here, Tay Zonde. Hey, thanks for having me. Original YouTuber. Oh my goodness, how are you doing? Doing great. I mean, I'm listening to your voice. People say it's therapeutic. <laughs> they it meet is. me in real life like, oh my goodness, that is your real voice. Now, did it change at all at any age, or were I, you at three-year-olds talking like this? I had an interesting voice when I was a kid, but it didn't get this deep until I was about 17. Oh, 17. And yeah. did it go overnight? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, it's not something that you're that self-conscious of when you're right. a kid. You're just like... I'm me. Suddenly people said I had a booming voice. I love your voice and what it's done for you. Did you think growing up that you were going to have the career that you would have now? Growing up, I didn't imagine anything like YouTube. A lot of what has happened with social media was hard to imagine previously because I remember being a kid in the 90s and my dad and I would watch all of these shows about the future. There was one called Beyond Tomorrow. I think it became Beyond 2000. That was the big year. 2000 was going to be, oh my gosh, we're in the future now that 2000 has happened. <laughs> and even then, now you think of 2000, it's like, Gosh, it's ancient history. Like broadband was just rolling out. Nobody had smartphones. But uh, so social media was all on the desktop. It was all like IRC and apps like ICQ. And to imagine even then something like YouTube, it was too far in the future. A little bit about me is I was in graduate school, basically getting a PhD in history. Not super interested in that, doing music as a hobby. And suddenly mm -hmm. this idea of uploading videos to the internet started to take off. So you're this kid in college pursuing a PhD in history, right? Yeah. In your mind, what do you, what did you think the next 10 or 15 years would look like? Gosh, when I was 23, I'll call it a kid now, I'm old enough. Yeah. I thought that I would become a university professor and not really enjoy it. I figured that I would be an adequate mid-level PhD student. I'd have to move off to like the University of Nova Scotia or <laughs> uh, some far off place to get a tenure track position. And then finally, once I did that and sort of miserably, okay, fine, I'll teach these undergrads and I'll have my three hots and a cot, so to speak, in mm -hmm. terms of a job, then I'd be able to finally pursue what I was passionate about, which was entertainment and singing. My plan was to do the stable, safe life direction. And at what point would you say, okay, I'm gonna go pursue this other thing that I've, I've always known to do? It happened by accident. Right. It happened when I started uploading videos to YouTube. I created an alter ego, Tay Day. And I said, hey, whatever happens with this name, it'll be my secret little thing, this alter ego that I've invented. It doesn't need to be connected to my real career, which mm. is my real response for me to be a university professor and do all that. Uh. Um, uh, and then Tay Zonde blew up so large that it didn't really make a difference. Google Adam Bonner, Tay Zonde comes up. And uh, yeah, I got lucky to have one of the early viral videos on yeah. YouTube, Chocolate Rain, yeah. which uh, really started to It's so catchy, I caught myself driving, Chocolate Rain! Yeah, well it's I, funny, people <laughs> who were alive during that time, it's kind of like this memory yeah. in their mm -hmm. lives where you know people from my parents' generation, they'll remember, hey, I remember when they announced the landing on the moon or something else that was very historic. Mm -hmm. And in a positive sense, uh, it sort of made a dent in people's memories. It's mm. like, man, I was in fifth grade and I was in the computer lab and, and we were saying, whoa, what is that dude? You know, he, right. He's really skinny and he sings with a deep voice like Barry White and he mm -hmm. moves away from the mic to breathe in. And oddly, just by being me mm -hmm. in a totally un, not self-conscious aspect, uh, because there was such a found footage mm. aspect of early YouTube where so many of the videos that went viral, it was this sense of- True would, authenticity. Yeah, it wouldn't be shown on NBC yeah. or on uh, in a traditional Hollywood movie. And I think it's so important um, to let viewers know your intention of doing this was an intention to let your desire out and to have fun. It wasn't the intention to blow up. To, I had to, no We idea. never knew, I, right? I uploaded Chocolate Rain as an experiment. Yeah. Uh, kind of as an afterthought. I was having another feat I was having another song featured on YouTube's front page. They told me this would happen. I'm like, oh, I have this other song that I better really rush and finish very quickly so I could double dip on the audience because I knew mm -hmm. when I had one video on the front page, I could get a little bit of uh, attention to the second video. Mm -hmm. And then a couple months later, it ended up that second video that I completed rushed as an afterthought went viral and that was what got me on the front page of Sunday's LA Times. I did Jimmy Kimmel. I opened for Girl Talk at First Avenue, which is an iconic club in Minneapolis where you know, Prince made videos. Mm -hmm. uh, all of these life opportunities came from that one viral video. It, it animates people's emotions and their souls.
And thank you for just knowing that you deliver medicine and that's the medicine you can bring back. Well, for, for me, I, I never thought of it that self-consciously. When someone tells me, hey, this played a healing role in my life. Uh, someone has come to me who's in their 20s and said, oh my gosh, I was, I was having a terrible time. I was suicidal as a kid. I was going through a rough, my parents were getting forced. It's some very personal life story. And your song really helped get me through those difficult times and mm -hmm. I just wanted to thank you. That is such the delicious message to give out to the people out there because some people feel like, wow, what is my passion? What, what am I gonna deliver to the world? When you were just doing something that was just natural to you, it was your desire, it was something that, that, that just called to you and it automatically just helped other people. Where are you taking your career now? I've been in Los Angeles for 10 years. I sing, I act, and I do voice work. Um, dream come true, I would love to do something like host a game show. I'd love to host a show like Jeopardy or Wheel of Fortune and be that guy who can come out and deliver that brand, mm. of kind of being a happy product and a happy experience and, and you know, do it five days a week or whatever that schedule is. What would be the ideal game show for you to host? Oh gosh, you know, I, Alex Trebek is actually retiring soon. He's announced it. Okay. Gosh, if I could do Jeopardy, that would be fantastic. But you know, I think he's, he already indicated someone, but you know, that's how, or maybe it'll be a new game show. Maybe it's a game show that hasn't been invented yet. Mm. So see, people who've got your game show pitches. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm down for making a pilot. Uh, but uh, I mean, long term, I would love to act more on camera. Mm. Um, I still look fairly young. I'm 36, but I don't really play 36 on camera. So. Mm. But long term, my personality lends itself towards being the roles of authority, the chief of police, the senator, the president, the executive. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and maybe I'll age into that. Maybe that, that'll peak when I'm 50. What do you tell What do you tell people who are like trying to find their purpose? You know, a lot of our audience wants to, you know, to own their greatness and to discover what that is for themselves. And they see somebody like yourself that, that, that has all this massive success. What would you say some of those first steps really are? Who were you being when you were making Chocolate Rain? Like, what was that day like? You know, it was just a regular day. Who were you being? One thing I remember, I'm not sure I've ever said this in an interview, is that I was singing takes of Chocolate Rain at about 10, 20 p.m. And in Minneapolis, the municipal law for quiet hours in apartments mm -hmm. is like from 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. You're not supposed to make noise. <laughs> and I remember I was looking at my watch being like, okay, it's 1020, 1022, 1025. <laughs> How late can I violate this ordinance and, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, irritating my neighbors? But I just felt able to be playful. I mm. felt like I had an interesting instrument. I was testing its limits for myself and truly nobody else mm -hmm. and i was creating something that seemed entertaining for myself and not necessarily anybody else and right. i was doing what made me happy and i think that is the medicine right there so many people want that significance like how do i get to that other point forgetting that you know how people get there is this authentic moment of just playing of just being present of just being the best you, you know, to be at that moment. Mm -hmm. All right, before I ask my last question, I know you've got a new podcast that out. Where do people find you? Uh, my podcast is Chocolate Pains, and we talk to top influencers, creators of viral brands and business ideas about how they did it, what their experience was, what were their trials and tribulations, and ultimately arrive at best practices. Uh, and uh, yeah, other than that, Google pays on day. So, with our brand here, we always want to find out how people are living their life, how people are being the best versions of themselves, wow. how they are youing it. How are you taying it? Gosh, I find that it's very important for me to have face-to-face -face contact with other people because I'm someone who gets lost in translation on social media. In some ways, videos aren't enough, uh, posts aren't enough, but when I can either do something that's very personalized, like there's a site called Cameo where I do birthday cards and little messages for people, or just a face-to-face -face conversation like this. This is where a healing context comes, where people are like, gosh, your aura and who you are, it's something that needs to be experienced in person. For sure. And for me, it's trying to create more opportunities for myself to uh, have that face-to-face -face interaction. And uh, you know, I, I think that'll have a good outcome. Thank you. You were definitely healing in my life today, bro. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. <laughs>